Here I am fixing the Joy Trainer Mini after that stupid crash I had last week into a tree. I'm planning to put a flight controller in it because I want to do some testing and it's going to be very interesting. What I have in my hand is a flight controller and this one is commonly used for racing drones, something like this. You might already know this, but you can also use this flight controller and configure it to be able to control the flight of a fixed wing aircraft, like the Joy Trainer Mini or any other flying wing or whatever. So you can use these servo outputs and program it however you want to control even cars or boats. Pretty cool. So what I want to achieve in this video is to configure this flight controller and wire it to be able to make their Joy Trainer Mini fly stable or stabilize the flight of the airplane. And that should be pretty easy because every flight controller is equipped with the accelerometer and maybe gyros and stuff like that. And that will provide the information needed to stabilize its flight. So this flight controller should be enough for that. Even if we want to add a GPS, we have the ports for that. But there are more specialized flight controllers for airplanes that are, have a lot more inputs and outputs for more servos, more uh, sensors and things like that. But this one for now should be enough. I already connected the ESC and the battery port there but there, there is a lot of work to be made for this one. I know you can also achieve the stabilization of the flight with receivers that already have gyros in them, like Spectrum have a lot of receivers with that feature. Also, FR Sky has some receivers with that feature. Or you can also buy the, there is a device that will do the same job. They have the PWM inputs from your receiver or PPM receiver and the servo outputs. So you can buy those, they are pretty inexpensive and they are very easy to use. But if you want to do more complex stuff, stick with me because I'm gonna show you how to wire your flight controller. And then I'm going to step up in future videos adding a GPS, return to home function and all of that. But let's start with stabilization. So here I have my flight controller. I already have some wires to it and I'll explain in a second. But first I want to show you the diagram here or the pinout of this flight controller. This is the Omnibus F4. It uses an SD card as well, so you can record uh, black box information in there, but we're not going to use that. And besides, this one is damaged, so it won't work. But here we have uh, the information we need to connect all the servos and things like that. Um, right here, the first connector here, we have a SBUS and PPN input. And we're going to use this for uh, reading the channels from the receiver. We're going to use the serial receiver because that's a lot better. The, only one wire connected to the flight controller. We don't need to connect all of the channels with separate cables. This one will be enough for that. So then we have the ones that we normally use for connecting our motors in a quadcopter but in this case we're going to use one for a motor the rest of them for servos but we still need an extra channel and we can see here they are labeled pwm one two three four and down here we have the number five and six which are this right here these two and we can use these two to to uh, run the the ground and the P pwm signal but we need the, the extra pin for running the 5 volts to power the servos. So what we're going to do for that is we can see here we have the male pins already connected or, or soldered to the board in these pins here. So we have this wire that is going to be connected to the receiver to the SBOS port and this I, I guess this is going to be my motor channel to control the ESC and motor and I have three channels left here, but I will need uh, an extra one or maybe two extra channels so I can get them from these ones here. But to connect the servo, we need signal, voltage and ground. And we have only ground and signal. So to overcome that, I'm going to use uh, something like this, this board. So I'm going to cut it to the correct size and connect the pins there 
And if you're wondering what's this here, well, this is a current sensor, so it will take the positive from the battery, it will run through this, and then it will go to the input of the ESC. So here I have the pins that I'm going to use, but I only need two of them. So I, I use a hot knife to cut through the plastic, and then I need to trim this board to the size that I need for this. So that's going to be the support for soldering the pins. And then I'm going to use a multimeter to figure out which pin is which. With this, I can identify the pins that are for ground and the rest obviously are the signal pins. After that, I solder the, the pins in place and then I start connecting the wires that are going to be uh, color coded. And then I just add some heat shrink tubing. And this is going to be my extension to connect the rest of the servos. And now I have to connect them to the flight controller to those pins. I use a multimeter again just to make sure that I'm going to solder the cables in the right place. And there it is, ready to go. I'm not going to cover the whole process of flashing the firmware on your flight controller. I use iNav, but you can also use Betaflight, Liverpilot or Ardupilot or whatever you want as long as it is compatible with your flight controller and it also supports airplanes or fixed wing aircraft. There are a ton of video tutorials on this topic so you can search online and see how to flash your flight controller. After flashing the flight controller and setting it up for the airplane, then I can start plugging the servos, but they won't move if you don't plug a 5V source. In this case, I use the same ESC that has a voltage regulator. If your ESC doesn't have one, then you need an external source of 5 volts. Then you'll see how the servos will move if you move your flight controller to counteract the movement. That's a good sign. Now I have to figure out which servo goes where. And for that, I'm going to prepare the airplane to put the flight controller in there. But first, I tested my ESC with the motor and the motor wasn't working well. I thought that this ESC was also bad, but as I found out later, the motor was a problem. So remember that crash? That wasn't caused by the ESC. It was caused by the motor. The motor was born. And that's why it wasn't working properly. I took out the motor to replace it. And let's take a look inside. The windings are all black and that's because they are burned. This is a new motor, and look at the windings. This is how they should look like. So after replacing the motor, now we can use any ESC we want, and I'm not going to use the spinner this time because that's what's preventing the motor from getting air-cooled. I use some plastic standoffs to place the flight controller inside, and we are almost ready. Also make sure that your flight controller is placed in the right orientation. There is an arrow pointing to the front of the flight controller. I glue the flight controller in place, I connect the servos, and that's it. I'll go back to the computer and make some adjustments to make it ready for its first flight. So all the electronics are mounted inside the airplane. The flight controller is there in those standoffs. And I'm going to connect it to the computer now. So I'm going to use this cable here, and that's why I made that hole from the side. And here you can see the flight controller booting up. Maybe you can see the lights there. So now back to the computer. We open iNav and I have it here already open and we connect it. I'm not going to get into the details on how to flash iNav to your flight controller. There are tons of videos online on how to do that. So I selected airplane and I chose airplane here. Uh, you can also choose flying wing and many other stuff here. I'm just choosing the normal airplane here, so it will do all the mixes for you right here. And then, yeah, you have to do the calibration and all of that, but I'm going to skip that. Um, in the outputs, you will see here uh, the servo output. I have centered the servos a little bit. I've modified the center position, which is here. You do that here. This is like the trim. So the middle position is by default 1,500. But in order to calibrate or to trim the, all the servos or, or the control surfaces, I had to move this a little bit. Okay, receiver is plugged. So now it's waiting to get the signal. Now we have signal. There you go. So if I move the sticks in my radio, you should be able to see that on the screen there. Set up some switches 
so I'm gonna use them for the modes and I have already made some changes here in the modes so I'm going to arm with this switch then angle mode and also uh, I can activate the horizon and heading hold just to test these uh, different options there and then we have another mode here which is manual so it will be totally manual just like having a normal receiver and then servo auto trim which will it's supposed to trim the whole airplane to make it fly straight and level to be able to have the stabilization in your airplane when you don't have your throttle up you have to enable the the air mode yeah, here it is permanently enable air mode so it will make the airplane stable even if you're you don't have your engine or motor running if you go to the jig hub website where inf is hosted um, you will see here in the wiki section some information that might be interesting for you so let's go again to outputs and let's take a look on how the airplane behaves so i'm going to put the battery because i want the servos to start moving so now right away you can hear a little bit the the servos moving if i do this right but it's just a light movement that's because of the of the air mode active um, but I also have my commands already functioning. The horizon mode, um, you can see there that the servos will move and will stay there to make the airplane fly straight and level. So if I go down, the elevator um, will go up. Maybe you. you you can see that there maybe I'm, I'm not sure but it moves a little bit and if I go up the elevator will go down and that's to stabilize the airplane and also if I do this the rudder will counteract that movement very quickly okay so if I go to the PID settings here uh, I have modified the yaw it was very low it was six but it doesn't move my rudder too much if I leave it at 6. So I'm going to, to put it to 100. I'm going to save. And you will see what will happen now. So it's just a matter of experimenting with these different values to get your aircraft tune, your a specific aircraft. So I'm going to leave the settings like this and I'm going out to fly and test the airplane. This is the first time I'm going to use a flight controller in any of my airplanes using iNav or any other software. The only time I've used a flight controller in the past is when I was flying multi-rotor drones. In regards to fixed wing, I always prefer to fly manually because it's a challenge for me. And that's the first launch. I'm using the default mode and when I started to make the first turn, it felt a little bit weird. Because I need to use a lot of rudder to make the turn. Let's take a look at the onboard camera footage so we can see how it looks like. Right there, you can see that the airplane is pointing towards the outside of the turn which is very inefficient and after a while I realized that by using this flight controller I need to use more rudder with the stabilized modes. This is still air mode and as you can see it's very weird. So I'm freaking out right now and I guess that the flight controller is keeping the airplane level according to the commands I give from the radio. So I suppose that if I even turn the airplane upside down the flight controller will try to keep the airplane flying in that position. So I switched to manual mode to have total control of the aircraft. And following that I was testing the other different modes which are stabilized and they are easier for the airplane. And of course because I haven't tuned the software perfectly for this aircraft, I'll get these wiggles a little bit depending on the speed and other factors. I'll repeat this again. This is a very basic setup. We can do a lot more with this kind of flight controllers like plugging a GPS using my FPV equipment and get the on-screen display right in my goggles with all the telemetry data and this flight controller has a verometer so it can measure the altitude as well which can also be measured by using the GPS so this video is just to show you the basics on the stabilization properties of the flight controllers which is the main thing and then it can get more complicated by using a GPS and many other parameters 
Right there I changed to heading hold mode and as you can see it shakes a little bit and that's because it overshoots so I need to figure out how to tune the PID settings for a better behavior. If I had done all the wiring for my FPV system I could change the parameters from the radio but I didn't so I had to do it in the computer. As a conclusion for this video I have to say that this was a successful test and everything was just as planned. I've learned a lot about using flight controllers for airplanes and it opens a whole new world of possibilities for using the airplanes as a platform for anything, even if it's something as simple as a stabilization system. Although it might not be very noticeable in the video, there is a huge difference when flying with a flight controller and manually. Although today the weather was on my side and there was no wind which contributed for a better flight, I can see that the airplane is way more stable with the flight controller, but it also feels really different from flying manually. If you want to learn more about using flight controllers for fixed wing aircraft, I'll leave some links in the description below, especially the article from our website. If you like this video, consider supporting this channel, since I'm doing this full time, I'll leave an affiliate link to Banggood, and if you buy anything from there at the same price, I'll get a small commission. Also consider subscribing, and even better, activating the notification bell. And finally, hit the like button. For now, I'll see you in the next project.